Hello and welcome to Is This the Worst All Black Side This Century? And yes, that's a provocative title. Um, and it'll probably give me a whole bunch of flack from people who don't even bother watching the video. So uh, let's just see how that all pans out, shall we? Anyway, hi, I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving Mall, your best place for your predictions and opinion. Uh, and for those of you who are first time viewers, yes, I do live in New Zealand. I have lived here for a while. Um, I go to regu regularly go to Super Rugby games and my Sen Cup games, uh, and I go to All Blacks tests as well, and I enjoy the All Blacks. So just because I'm talking with an English accent doesn't mean this is me being down on the All Blacks by any stretch of the imagination. So what I really wanted to do here was to bring a, bring a bit of perspective to this all, because there has been a whole bunch of chat since the game um, about talking about, oh, suddenly Ireland are the number one team and... Um, uh, and uh, and how uh, how sort of how poor have the All Blacks um, been playing this year? Um, some people have even gone so far as to suggest, hey, it's time for Hanson to go and all of that kind of stuff, which is absolute um, claptrap. Let's be honest. So um, I thought I'd pull up some results. What I'd do is we're going to have a quick look at what the All Blacks results have been like this century. Um, and what does that tell us? And we're also going to have a quick look um, at what the All Blacks world ranking has been um, during that time as well. It's pretty simple. We have to do is look at who's been number one. Let's be honest for most of that time. Look at when they haven't been. Um, so let me bring up my screen with you. There we go. And uh, so I can move this out of the move me out of the way so we can actually see. Um, there we go. I'll sit over there so you can actually see um, the numbers. So here we are. This um, here you go. You have a table here that shows you all uh, the number of wins, draws, and losses that the All Blacks have had since the uh, turn of the century. Um, I guess the first thing I just wanted to point out was uh, look at, just look at the, the sort of the number of games uh, and also the flow of games, um, if that kind of makes sense. Prior to sort of um, 2008, um, you can see the All Blacks generally um, had. Oh, sorry, let me bring up the here. I'll put it on here. Um, so that generally had sort of less than 12 games, or 12 or less games um, per year, and they actually spiked and had more games in sort of 2003 during the Rugby World Cup. Um, you remember they lost in the semi-final there, so they could have actually played another game um, in in, the, in that. Um, uh, in that year, 2007, obviously they uh, lost in the um, quarterfinals, uh, so they could have had an extra two games on there as well. So you can see, actually, the the kind of uh, the flow used to be um, sort of ten to or so games um, that's slowly increasing uh, each year uh, between rugby world cups, and then more games in a rugby world cup year, and that's kind of switched round. Um, since that 2007. You've got to remember, in that 2007, led to a uh, big review by um, New Zealand Rugby as to how they structured everything um, and how they should approach things, etc. Um, and you can see that after 2007, what's been kind of interesting is that actually the All Blacks play more games in the non-Rugby World Cup years and they actually play less in, played less in 2011. Um, and then again, Three years of playing um, 14 games a year um, and then playing 12 games come a Rugby World Cup year. Now remember, in 2011 and 2015, the All Blacks obviously made it, made it all the way to the final and won the final as well, showing you that they, could pl that they um, played the maximum number of games they possibly could that year uh, or, or the maximum of games they had scheduled that year. Um, and yeah, 2018, they've still got one more game to play, which is against Italy, which will bring them up to the, uh, the 14 mark. Um, yet again, so it's kind of interesting to see that uh, see that change in the cycle for the um, for the All Blacks. Um, and if we look at the last cycle, sort of 2012 to 2014, sure, they only lost two games in those three years and had two draws. Uh, in these last three years, we're going to end up because at most we know they're going to beat Italy. We're going to end up with five losses and one draw, and that's still very impressive over. Um, a three-year period. Um, is this the worst team then? No, clearly it's not. Look, if we look back to 2009, we had four losses. There were two the year before, two years before that. So in that run there between 2007 and 2009, um, 
we had eight um, losses. We've only had like we've had, we've had five in here. Um, so no, this is by far uh, this is no near the the, the worst team um, that we've had. Uh, also, um, if we go back to sort of year two thousand um, again, we had those three losses followed by two, followed by two. And if we looked on the table here, you see consistently losing a couple of games every year. Whereas if we look at this run here, um, it has been basically well, since sort of since 2011 look at one zero one 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 two two and it's much improvement on this two two four section we had here or even this section we had here at the beginning of the turn of the century as well so um it's modern it's obviously our, our short-term memories that are leading us to this this wow they've lost two games a year that's um that's shocking that's because they didn't do it between 2012 and 2016 they had an amazing run of uh, of performances during those um five years so um so first off so no um uh, yeah i say deliberately provocative title just because i wanted to bring a little bit of perspective to some of this stuff so also let's just have a quick look at the um world rugby's rankings what i'm looking here is at the wikipedia page for it um because uh let me just move again my, my screen move me out of the way um and that's because if we look it's easy we can use this um bar down the side here to show us kind of um where uh new zealand haven't been number one in the world so it only goes back as far as 2003 but we can see um in there so that's uh that's um, around 2003 up until so sort of the middle of 2004 um they weren't number one they dropped out again into sort of 2008 and then towards the end of 2009 as well so if we go back to our list here you can see and so it only starts in 2003 but we had that um around these two losses and then as we said um in this space here we also had uh new zealand dropping out so those are the two areas where you would have to say um new zealand were uh at, at a weaker point and if, and if you actually look in the table here we have new zealand their worst ever ranking is number three and that was in 2003 so even when they did drop out during that 2008 2009 period they only dropped down a second um, they didn't drop down any further than that so you've got to say that 2003 team according to the rankings was the worst one um and uh but then also there was that period to say with those four losses in 2009 three of them to south africa one to england i think it was from memory uh, and uh, that period around 2000 sort of end of 2007 early 2008 as well um, they also dropped down south africa also stepped up during that time and of course you remember that would have been during the rugby world cup where um, New Zealand lost to France in the quarterfinals um, and South Africa went on to win the competition um, and world ranking points count double in the Rugby World Cup which is why you see uh, why South Africa could jump up so quickly even though New Zealand didn't um, lose that many games uh, in that period either they only lost um, four games in there but towards the end of 2007 um, but hey uh, they lacked they, they they missed out on the quarterfinal semi-final final and winning double points in those which is what allowed south africa um to head up go up and become world number one so there you go folks um i don't think this is the the uh um this is the worst team by any stretch of the imagination but also um they aren't firing that's pretty clear we've had team had people like dan carter um coming out and saying that this team is by far the best that he's seen the all blacks playing and you've got to sort of scratch head a little bit that one and think about well really is it are they that much better than the 2015 team or are we uh, are we talking them up um a bit there now part of that might be that they're seeing things that we don't let's be honest um they uh dan carter knows much more about all blacks rugby uh, than i ever will let's be let's be let's be blunt about that uh and we have heard steve hansen saying that he is changing the style of the all blacks um and that the moment they're between styles and so they aren't quite firing on all cylinders because they are between those styles and they just they're not actually playing one style or the other there was an interesting tweet um that uh, that i saw that showed because uh, this this move to having the dual playmakers of uh, either Barrett and Dmac um, in ten fifteen or Moanga and Barrett, as we've seen also in sort of uh, in that ten fifteen 
or or 23 and 10 actually when he sort of also 22 jersey and 10 jersey um but if showing basically uh, Bowden Barrett and Richard Munger stood next to each other uh near a breakdown and going look we've got two playmakers both but uh, we've got two players playing the same or doing the same role at the same time which you can't have um and it's little things like that um that Hansen's probably talking about why they haven't quite got this style down pat yet um uh, or that uh, basically you need to have that second the if if to, having two playmakers is not a bad option okay the reason for that being that if one of them is at the bottom of the ruck you can still play you can still execute your moves um one of the things that you'll see some teams doing is if their scrum half um, is at the bottom of the ruck you know the next play is going to be a pick and go because the other because the other forwards just don't have the skills um or know what pass they should be making if they are playing in the fl- in the scrum half role, so you can actually um, restrict what a team can do by dragging their scrum half in and uh, making him not available. You can do a similar sort of thing by not having the ten or the fly half, the playmaker available as well. So if Barrett's in the, uh, has taken taken it to the line, gets tackled in his ruck, uh, the ball can come out and can go to a Dave McKenzie or Mwanga, uh, and then it, then the play can um, can be executed. Uh, just as well as if um, a Bowden Barrett is there because they've got a playmaker who knows the calls, who knows the moves, who knows what to um, what what to do, rather than say a second rower or someone or a winger who doesn't um, because they don't have a second playmaker available. So no, so two playmakers can work. Also, look think about someone like Dane McKenzie and Bowden Barrett. They can both um, play uh, enter the line um, at from inject themselves in the line from fullback. And they can usually play in an outside centre kind of or, or even wing kind of role. Um, if the, if you've got two playmakers, one of them can be you can play kind of left and right in some stages, some some ways. And if the ruck is towards the edge, then the other player is just playing uh, an outside back position, which they both they're capable of. Or you can have a playmaker either side of the ruck if it's in the middle of the field. So and there's a lot of things you can do with two playmakers. Uh, it's not ne- um, and uh, the, whilst the argument on Twitter was that you know you have to have just one conductor. I don't believe that there are ways of playing with two playmakers. Do you have to have two? No, you don't. Um, but it is a way of playing. So um, I guess I've gone run off track a bit of the title. Um, but in, in plain English, no, this is not the worst All Black side ever. Um, there's uh, there's more to come from them. And uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, it was just a very good performance by Ireland, and it should it's setting us up for a cracking Rugby World Cup next year. Don't forget to subscribe, face up there, um, for future content and opinions. Um, I'll be also doing live post-match reaction to England versus Australia and Wales versus South Africa this weekend. And if you've got this far, there's two videos up there and down there that I'm sure you'll um, find really interesting.